So in the previous lecture, we looked at uh, finite sequences, uh, that is strings. And now we want to look at infinite sequences. And uh, in particular, we want to look at um, mathematical structures that uh, consists of uh, sets of infinite sequences. And in particular, we want to uh, put uh, structures like a topology or a metric space on it and later uh, uh, a measure structure. So let's start with the concept of an infinite sequence. Uh, as usual, we use A to denote our alphabet. And um, A to the N denotes the set of all infinite sequences over A. So in, uh, such an infinite sequence would look like the following. So we take X and X would be X0, X1, X2, X3, and so on, with the condition that uh, each XI is in A. We will uh, sometimes use an alternative notation for this, uh, namely x of 0, x of 1, x of 2, x of 3, and so on. So instead of subscripts, we'll be using kind of function values here. And uh, this indeed uh, 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 points out that x is actually a function that uh, uh, maps uh, the natural numbers to elements of A. We will also be working with uh, bi-infinite sequences over A, and uh, this is denoted by A to the Z. And uh, such bi-infinite sequences are uh, uh, look the f look uh, as follows. So we have x minus two, x minus one, x zero, x one, x two dot dot dot. So instead of using the natural numbers to uh, uh, as index indices, we uh, using integers here, minus 2, minus 1, and so on. Uh, this will be important in the dynamics context, uh, and uh, we will be looking at shift maps and so on. So now we have the set of all infinite sequences over an alphabet, but we would uh, uh, like to put a little bit more structure on it. And uh, we start with uh, looking at uh, the topology. So we want to put a topology on a to the n. And uh, whenever we want to define a topology, we have to answer the question, what are the open sets? Because that's exactly what a topological space uh, is. It specifies uh, open sets. So we start with uh, the topology on a. So that's our uh, base space, the alphabet. and. Um, we can just work, for instance, with a standard topology if uh, the um, uh, alphabet happens to be the reals or the, the uh, compact unit interval. Um, then we can just use the topology that's um, given by the uh, open intervals, for instance. Um, for uh, if A is finite or if it's uh, equal to, if it's the set of natural numbers or integers, um, we will use the discrete topology. Uh, the discrete topology um, is specified by just saying that every subset is open. So um, it's it's trivial in, in a way because it makes no distinction between sets that are open and not open. Just everything is open. So now to pass from a topology on A to a topology on A to the N, on on the sequence space, uh, we use the product topology. Um, the product topology is uh, defined as the smallest topology such that the projections um, that project an element of the sequence space a to the n to uh, the ith component here, uh, so that these projections are continuous functions. Um, so what does it mean to uh, take the smallest topology? Well, it just means we have to add that many open sets and not more so that these projections, so these functions here, all of those for each i, become continuous. What does it mean for a function to be continuous? Well, it means that whenever I take an open subset of uh, a, so this is where we, we, we use that we already have a topology on A. Well, if we take an open subset of A, then the pre-image 
of the ith projection, p to the minus 1 sub i of u, must be open to. Or uh, likewise for closed sets, if we take this closed set of a, of a, call it f, then its pre-image must also be closed. So that, that still sounds a little bit abstract, and it, it doesn't give us uh, really an idea of what the pro product topology looks like. But in case uh, we're working with a discrete topology, and that's uh, the case we're really usually working with, um, it's uh, not too hard to uh, work out what the topology looks like, the product topology. Um, namely, we observe that um, these kind of singleton sets uh, are open. And these singleton sets are form kind of the basic uh, building blocks of the, of the set then, because every other set can be obtained as a union. Every other subset of A can be obtained as a union of such singleton sets, of course. So um, in this sense, we, we only have to look in order to see what the topology, the product topology looks like. We only have to look at the pre-images uh, of, uh, of those singleton sets here. And uh, those are exactly the uh, set of all infinite sequences, uh, x, such that the ith entry in x is a. So this is an important object, so let's give it a, a, a special name, call it a, a cylinder set. So again, for a cylinder set, we fix some uh, uh, element of the alphabet and um, some natural number. And we say that the uh, cylinder uh, set uh, at i given by a is precisely that, that set here that we had on the previous slide. Namely, it is the uh, pre-image of um, a of that singleton set a um, under the ith projection. So here's an example how you can uh, visualize these cylinder sets. So let's take the example where A is the binary alphabet. And then uh, the set of all infinite sequences would be that infinite binary tree, which I, uh, you, can, you can think of as uh, this cone here. And the, the paths uh, through that infinite binary tree are the element elements of uh, uh, um, a to the a to the n. Um, so what does an uh, does a cylinder set in this case look like? Well, um, we have to take the set of all sequences whose uh, ith position equals a. So let's assume a is zero. That means they all all these paths through this tree have to go through the zero. Uh, path at, at level i. And apart from that, it's uh, uh, nothing is prescribed. So after that, they can do whatever they want. So all these sequences here are actually in the uh, cylinder 0 sub i. So we know now that the uh, cylinder sets must be open because they are the pre-images uh, of an open set uh, in A uh, under the discrete topology. But uh, we actually want to uh, generate a full topology. And for that, um, we must satisfy some more uh, requirements. Namely, open sets must follow, satisfy the following things. Open sets must be closed under finite intersections, and they must be closed under finite arbitrary unions. And it's uh, not hard to see that uh, the, the cylinder sets that we just defined are not closed under finite intersections. That means uh, the, if I take the intersection of two such cylinders here, it's not an object of this form. So what we have to do now is uh, actually take this closure. In, in, in technical terms, what we're doing is to pass from a sub-base 
or subbasis of a topology to a basis. So the uh, cylinder sets, those basic cylinder sets, form a subbasis. And now, by closing it under finite intersections, we pass to a basis. And it's actually not hard to see what finite intersections of cylinders look like. So, for instance, take a, a cylinder A sub i and a cylinder B sub j, then the intersection of the two is just the set of all sequences that have um, A in the i-th position and B in the j-th position. So um, uh, these objects we obtain by closing under finite intersections are um, what we would call basic open cylinders now. And those are um, precisely the sequences that are uh, for which finitely many positions are fixed. So here, in this example, we would get a set uh, of infinite sequences which have exactly two positions fixed. So, uh, essentially, the, the basis of our topology would be the set of all sequences which for which finitely many positions are fixed. Um, Basis then means there's just that uh, every open set um, can be obtained as a, as a union of sets of this form. But we can make our life a little, even a little bit easier. Namely, that we can, we can show that every, any such uh, set of this form with finitely many positions fixed can be obtained from a cylinder of the following form. So from a basic open cylinder of the following form um, using operations of unions and finite intersections. So here now, we look at a string sigma, let's say of length k. So instead of a, a single symbol, we look at a whole string. And now we look at the set of all infinite sequences that at position n have the string sigma in it. So x at n is sigma 0, and xn plus k minus 1 is sigma k minus 1. So again, sigma is assumed to have length k. So this would be the set of all sequences that at position n have the sigma string sigma in it. And uh, for, uh, to make notation even easier, the most important case will be when n is equal to 0. So uh, square bracket of sigma is uh, denotes the basic open cylinder given by zero uh, by sigma at zero. So those are, this here denotes the set of all sequences that start with a string sigma. So to summarize the topology we just developed, um, the open sets in our sequence space A to the N are precisely the ones that can be written as a union of basic open cylinders sigma sub i, where again an infinite sequence x is an element of this cylinder if and only if uh, starting at i, um, at the ith position, it is uh, the, uh, the entries in x are precisely uh, those of sigma uh, for the length of sigma. I should um, also point out here that the, the development for uh, bi-infinite sequences is, is uh, very similar. So um, we will uh, also talk about uh, uh, basic open cylinders for the bi-infinite sequences, and they're defined just in the same way they're defined for uh, A to the N.